The Tom Woods Show, episode 1701. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Folks, if you're considering homeschooling, you know I recommend the self-taught Ron Paul curriculum for which I created 400 videos. It's an excellent education in all the standard subjects, plus personal finance for teens, how to be an effective public speaker, how to run a home business, the kinds of things nobody teaches, but they darn well should. Not to mention it's self-taught, so you get your sanity back as a parent. Make sure you join at my special link because only there do you get my $160 worth of free bonuses you can't get anywhere else. Check it out at ronpaulhomeschool.com. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here. I've got a couple of my daughters in the swimming pool just beneath the window of my office where I'm recording this. I don't usually record this time of day and I'm actually supposed to be out there swimming with them. So you may hear them. I don't think this microphone picks it up, but boy, when the two young ones, six and 10, get swimming. Oh my gosh, they have so much fun and laugh and splash and make a racket. So if you hear that, that's a little bit of authenticity coming from the uh, Woods household over here. But anyway, I'm very glad to be joined today by Martha Bueno, who is vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Miami-Dade County. And we want to talk about the so-called duopoly, the, the two major parties and the way they rig the system. And in particular, we want to talk about an initiative she has coming up in the very, very near future that is worthy of your support. And let's talk to her now. Martha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tom, for having me on. It's a real honor. I love what you're doing here with this uh, Let Her Speak campaign. And I didn't know half the stuff, really, that you sent me about just how handicapped a third party is in the present sense. I thought it was pretty bad, but it's, it's worse than even I thought. So let's talk about Well, first of all, I suppose probably 95% of my listeners know a little something about Joe Jorgensen, but do you feel like you could make like an elevator pitch for her in a minute before we get into why we would want to promote this campaign of yours? Absolutely. I think that Joe Jorgensen is the best candidate out there. Certainly in this time when we're, we're looking at, you know, two not so great candidates, we're looking at Trump and Biden. So Just on that alone, I think she's a better option. But then if we just look at Joe Jorgensen, she is an entrepreneur. She has a PhD. She has an MBA. She started a company, has been a libertarian for, I I believe, lifelong. But she did run in 1996 uh, with Harry Brown, and she received half a million votes. So uh, she's a great candidate. I think that we are extremely lucky to count her on our team. And I think, you know, if people haven't heard about her, they definitely should. because. There's really not not a whole lot of things that I can say about her that aren't good. I think she's a great, great candidate in general. Well, I'm going to link on the show notes page is going to have information about what you're doing. So it's tomwoods.com slash 1701 for the episode number. And I'm also going to put on there the interviews I did myself with Joe Jorgensen and also Spike Cohen so people can listen for themselves and get uh, more of an idea about both of them. So let's talk about this movement, Let Her Speak, and... I'm reading here that it has over 90 convoys planned around the country. I don't know what that means, but it sounds awesome. (laughs) So first of all, I want to say that I would love to take credit for this idea, but I cannot. So this idea for the convoy came about from Casey Daly. She's just a libertarian activist living her life. And she thought of this. She saw that meme going around, um, which shows that if people who stayed home that hadn't voted had voted, the, our elections would be completely different. And it's our belief, it's our contention that the reason people don't go out and vote is because there's nothing that really inspires them to. And certainly in this cycle, there's nothing really that would inspire you to go go out and vote for one of the two established candidates. There's no, uh, there's no oomph to it. So this, this event, Let Her Speak, it's completely grassroots. And so what it is, is on August 8th, uh, it's a Saturday, 12.30 on the East Coast, 9.30 on the West Coast, and, you know, in between, uh, we will start all together a convoy around our cities, our towns. We will start in a single file line in our cars to maintain social distance, and we'll go around. So every convoy is individual, which is a great libertarian idea in and of itself. You plan your own thing. You can do your own thing. Um, and anybody is free to participate. You don't have to be a libertarian. You certainly don't have to be part of the party. And 
you don't even have to, you know, you could be any political position. Just go ahead and, and come to the uh, electjoe.com website and you can get all the information if you want to start a convoy. The idea is for all of us to meet up and go around showing support. Yes, for Joe Jorgensen, but it's it's so much more than that. It is, it's an event to show people that there are hundreds and thousands of us that are not being heard, that we want better representation and we can't get it. And the reason we can't get it is because there is voter suppression going around in this country. And so it's a situation where I myself am an activist and I hear every single day, at least one person tell me, you know, well, you guys need to start small and work your way up. And they don't understand that we have been working towards these goals since 1971. And in order to get on the ballot, uh, Republicans and Democrats, they don't have to do anything. They get automatic ballot access. Meanwhile, third party candidates, such as the Green Party and the Libertarian Party and many other parties, um, we have to secure ballot access across the United States. And in some cases, it's pretty easy. And in most cases, it's not. It's actually a daunting task. So just one example, so I don't bore your listeners, uh, the state of Tennessee, they need to collect 56,000 petitions to get a candidate on the ballot each election cycle. And, you know, I don't know if, you, if your listeners are familiar with petitioning, but what the cost per, per petition signed, if we hire people to do it, is about 2 to $4. So we're looking at about $200,000 just to get on the ballot in Tennessee. Again, the Republicans and the Democrats pay $0, and that doesn't even uh, let us get into the debates. So we spend millions of dollars, hours and hours of volunteers, you know, just so much, just trying to e even out the playing field. And so it's, it's a real travesty that this is happening in our country when our country likes to tell other countries that they need to open up their, their, debate, their, their voting process, they need to have a clear process. We tell other countries how to do it. And yet here in the United States, home of the free uh, land, you know, and we don't have that. We don't have a way to easily get equal access for all candidates. Now, there are requirements that so-called third party candidates have to meet in order to get into the debates. And it seems to me that getting into the debates is pretty important if you want to be taken seriously and if you want to have an opportunity really to have a national viewing audience evaluating you. And what you noted in an email to me is the, the polling thresholds and the way these polling thresholds are tinkered with so as to make sure they're always out of reach of whatever candidates might plausibly reach them. That is correct. So um, I think most American voters will recall that Ross Perot was in the debate. And um, that was before the 10% uh, inclusion or 15% inclusion we have now, uh, numbers. So if, if that would have been instituted back then, he would not have made the debates either. And I want to point out that even though he did make it very far and his campaign did very well for an independent, uh, the following year, he was not allowed back into the debates. So even if you do do well, um, they still have the option to leave you off of the debate. So in Gary Johnson's case, he polled at 12% before you know, the debates even came into be a thing. And then once they realized he was polling so well, they made sure that it was a 15%. And then on top of that, they don't even ask in the polls, he was not included. So I received several of these calls and it was, who are you voting for? Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton? And I would say, no, neither. I'm voting for Gary Johnson. And they, they would tell me, well, then I guess we're putting you down as not voting or as an independent. They would not record my vote for Gary Johnson. So it's not even the 15% threshold. It is the fact that even if people want to name that candidate, it does not get recorded. Yeah, that was the thing that surprised me. So even if I go outside the provided options and voluntarily offer the name Joe Jorgensen or whoever it happens to be, mm -hmm. well, that just you're just going to be in miscellaneous or not sure or whatever, and yes. that's the end of your response. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, that is the way it goes in this country. Now, here, now, meanwhile, I am constantly hearing from the media about people in this country who are marginalized and who need to have their voices heard and that the media is going to be the champion of the marginalized. Well, my voice is not ever heard. The libertarian voice is heard only in caricature, if it's heard at all. 
And I would say we are very much a, a minority, we're, we're, and we're a minority that is misrepresented, that is attacked, sometimes viciously, or it's either viciously attacked or completely ignored. So you would think that the media that trumpets its commitment to giving a voice to the voiceless would give us a voice. So it's almost, Martha, like there's some kind of double standard going on here. I would agree with you on that one. I think not only is there a double standard, but then when they do mention us, it's always in a parody fashion. So uh, going back to Gary Johnson, uh, we, everybody everybody heard the, and what is Aleppo moment? Um, of course, they didn't see more of that interview because immediately following that, Gary Johnson answered the question about Syria and was you know, very spot on about our regime change war in Syria. But they heard him say, what is Aleppo? And then everybody just made fun of him. And that was it. And it's, it's sad. It's sad that a country that elects people based on a popularity contest, you know, that's all they're hearing. They're hearing this guy that likes to smoke weed, who doesn't know what Aleppo is. Meanwhile, Gary Johnson was a two-time governor of New Mexico. And he did fantastic as a governor. He balanced their budget. He got them, um, you know, just a lot of a lot of good things. I don't want to get down the down to the uh, get into Gary Johnson too much, but he was a fantastic candidate. And yeah, he was a little quirky and you know fun. But I don't think that they should have focused on those things when it was a serious campaign. Well, again, Gary Johnson had his problems like anybody, but compare them to the gaffes and ignorance of the the rest of the candidates. It's not even a contest. I mean, I mean. I personally think we have the most ignorant ruling class in the history of the world. And to spend your time trying to dig out a gaffe by a guy who, you know, has to struggle to get on the ballot seems like an odd use of resources, you know, unless the purpose is simply to suppress other voices and to make people who are outside the mainstream seem ridiculous. I mean, what, what other reason would there be for this? I think you're exactly on the money. I think that the whole reason is that when you listen to the libertarian message, when you hear that we want equality for everyone, and we've been supporting equality from the day we, we were founded, we were for all of your rights from day one. We aren't like the other two parties that come around when, you know, oh, this is trending, so now we're going to be for this. You know, um, the Democrat... The Democratic Party is the party that everybody hears is for gay rights, is for the LGBT community. And I want, I would love to tell people who believe that, no, they aren't. They still aren't. Joe Biden was not in favor of gay marriage until 2008. Meanwhile, the Libertarian Party, we've been here since 1971, since we formed. And as a matter of fact, our first uh, candidates, Tony Nathan, a woman, uh, first of all, in 1972, she received the first electoral, electoral college vote, but her running mate was an openly gay man. John Hospers was gay. So we have supported, we don't just say that we're for things, we are for things, and we've been for equal rights. So I think the reason they want to suppress us is because those messages resonate with people. And if we win, we take their power. And that's not something that they're going to give up easily. So of course, we have a higher mountain to climb. Of course, we get um, you know, hated by all. And that's okay, because I really believe our message is that strong, that we can and we will overcome those issues. I want to ask a little bit about you, if you don't mind, before we uh, get back to our topic here. Because I'm always curious about how, given that we are a kind of isolated minority and we don't have major media behind us and all that, how somebody finds out about us. Or there are some people who are just born libertarians and maybe they don't know the word, but in their gut, they know what they believe. So I, I'd like to know what your story is, number one. And then number two, how did you go from libertarianism to saying, I'm going to devote myself to the Libertarian Party, which is a lot of hard work? Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, in my case, I had never heard of libertarian anything. I uh, graduated from high school of a public uh, high school, like almost everybody I know. And um, I you know, I had never heard anything about it. And so I just was a Republican because my parents were Republicans. And, you know, that's what you do. You vote the way your parents uh, kind of raised you. And so one day after voting for George Bush the first time, 
and seeing, you know, I, I had a child shortly thereafter. And I remember just thinking, oh my God, like we're going to war and we're going to war. Um, and I'm not sure of the reasons why we're going to war. And it was just, I was struggling. And so my uncle, who is a libertarian, told me, you know, you, you might be a libertarian. And I was like, no way. What is that? I've never even heard of them. Of course, I'm not a libertarian. So of course, I did my research. And the more I read, the more I learned, you know, and I think it's a small progression, which it's kind of a side note, but it annoys me so much when people are like, you're not a real libertarian to people. You know, it's, it's a slow progression. Nobody is born a full blown libertarian. I think everybody dabs their feet in a little bit and then the water's warm and they get in a little more and so on and so forth. So uh, that, that term really annoys me, but, um, from there, it just, you know, I voted libertarian every election since. And then Gary Johnson's campaign brought me out to Albuquerque. I saw on Facebook that there was an event to, um, you know, go out and be part of that night. Uh, Of course, it was going to be to hear his concession speech. But I thought, how cool. I want to be there for that. So I flew myself out to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I got in contact with their local Libertarian Party. And I volunteered. I said, you know what, if you need me for anything, I'm here. So they had me blowing up balloons and then earlier in the day going to the polls. And I actually got to work the poll closest to Gary Johnson's house, I guess. And I got to meet people that had met him. Uh, You know, his kids had gone to school with people and they'd come up to me and be like, yeah, I love Gary, but I just can't vote for him because I have to vote for one of the other two. And it was the same sentence regurgitated by everybody I met. I have to vote for so-and-so so so that the other person doesn't win. And it didn't matter who that so-and-so was. Either it was Trump or it was Hillary, but, you know, that's, everybody had the same story. And so I came back to Miami. I reached out to my local group and I have joined headfirst and I've been a part of it and I've been the vice chair now for three years. And it's something that I can't imagine not being a part of and not doing. I believe so strongly in America and leaving it better than when we found it. And I think that right now I'm really concerned for everything that's going on. And I want to make sure that I do the most that I can for my country, for my city, especially, you know, I, I just, it's scary as a Cuban whose parents had to leave communism, who had to leave everything behind, who I also grew up in Venezuela. And we know that that's a, um, another similar situation. I mean, the thing that scares me the most is unlike those two countries, we don't have anywhere to go. You know, I, my parents always knew that they would come to America and people in Venezuela always, you know, would talk about coming to America if things got bad there, but where would we go? You mentioned your Cuban background. So how do you interact with the, you know, the, the Cuban community that does have obviously a lot of Republicans in it. And they, they're anti-communist, just like you. And they think the natural thing to do is join the Republican Party. How do you talk to them? Well, um, that has been very frustrating for me as in my own family, my, uh, you know, they're, they're very Republican and they can see the bias, but they're scared to leave the Republican Party. So very recently, um, a good friend of mine, Zach Foster, and I started Libertario Hispanos on Facebook. And um, what we've decided to do is translate uh, all of Joe's videos. So I am the, the voice of Joe in Spanish. I, <laughs> and um, I just, you know, translate. We, we translate her videos. We post them dubbed in Spanish. And we're trying to get as much of her platform translated to Spanish in order to help people who are not only Republicans, uh, Democrats, anybody who just needs to hear this message to get them on board. I can't say that I have the answer to this. Um, I, this, this event that I have planned that we're planning the the convoy, uh, let her speak here in Miami. What we're doing is we are going to go around the Hispanic news stations, Telemundo, uh, Univision. And, and, and if they're, they won't listen to us, then we're going to have to go to them. That's that's just the the gist of it. We're going to actually have to go out and reach into the community and say we're here and we're not going to go away and we want to be heard. Can you send me the link to where you have Spanish translations of of what Joe's been saying? Absolutely. I will send them to you. Okay, I'll put that up at tomwoods.com slash 1701. All right, back to the Let Her Speak campaign. Tell me exactly what it is you would like our listeners to do. So they can participate in many ways. Uh, One would be, of course, find your local convoy and join us. You don't have to do anything. If you have a car, um, just 
drive it there. If not, you know, maybe give us a shout out and we'll, we'll see what we can do, who we can pair you with. But what we want is for people to come and show their support. Like I said, it's because of COVID, we're just doing a convoy driving one car after the other. Some places are just doing it up and down Main Street. Um, everybody's planning their own routes. So, you know, it's across the country. Right now, we have over 90 different convoys. We have one at least in every state, including Alaska. And uh, places like in Florida, we're coming up to 10 different locations. So they can either join on a convoy that's already planned or they can plan their own. And everything is on the Facebook page or on Elect Joe. So you can get all the information to start your own convoy. Um, I'm hosting, like I said, here in Miami, but I'm doing it in the Doral area. So if anybody in Miami wants to start one, we definitely could use one in downtown. You know, there's so many places that we could do it. Um, I would love for people to join, join in any way they feel comfortable. Just join, just let's get the voice out. Let's, it doesn't have to be for Joe. If you are a Republican, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Green Party, if you are anything and you want to hear from all of your options, if you want to end voter suppression, please join us because this isn't something that only affects libertarians. This affects everybody and everybody who's listening to the message that the Republicans and the Democrats are putting out. And that's it. That's all they're hearing. They deserve to hear what else is out there. And for no, no other reason than just look at, at what Ross Perot managed to accomplish in his run. Sure, he didn't win. But because he ran and because his platform was so popular, in 1996, both the Republicans and the Democrats agreed to the deficit reduction. And that was attributed to Ross Perot. So even if Joe Jorgensen does not make the debate stage, even if she doesn't win, you're still making a huge impact by affecting the way the, the United States will be run moving forward. If we create enough of a wave, if we tell them that enough is enough, they can't just keep printing money and devaluing the currency we already have. They can't just keep doing all of these things, war especially. I think that that's something that most of us can agree on. We're currently in seven wars. And why? Why are we spending all of this money to go kill people on the other side of the world when we know that we've been lied to for years? So please come out. Please support this event, regardless of your party affiliation. That's what we're asking for. All right. Well, tremendous. Now, the website is electjoe.com. I assume I don't have to tell this audience that we are not spelling Joe, J-O-E. That, that's, that's another candidate. This is electjo.com. So electjo.com is the one and only site being promoted on this episode. So go do that. It's coming up really quickly, uh, August 8th. So as we're recording this now, it's, uh, it's under two weeks. So go do it, spread the word. And Martha, thanks so much for your hard work and for your time today. Thank you, Tom. I certainly appreciate this. I appreciate everything you do for the Libertarian Party and for the Libertarian Movement. All right, everybody, I got a couple of daughters who are dying for me to get into the swimming pool, so I have to get out of here. I have no closing banter for you at all, except to say I hope to see you tomorrow for episode 1702. <laughs> see you then. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.